welcome to fundamentals of artificial intelligence. Today we will be looking at game playing. Games have been an integral part of the development of artificial intelligence. The quest for writing computer programs that could play games is as old as computers themselves. Starting with Samuel's checker AI, we have AI chess playing programs to more recently the AlphaGo. All of these have pushed the frontiers of AI. One important realization has been that game allows a very good platform for experimentation and that is why there is fascination for looking at games. Games provide a well defined environment in which states are intrinsically discrete. So that allows one to focus entirely on the decision making strategy. If we had not taken these games and would have looked at decision making strategies to be evaluated by other means such as a robot playing with a kid, there would be so much of uncertainty involved, so much of probabilities to be taken into account that we may have lost the very purpose of using it to look at our decision making strategy. In games rules are well defined and success and failure can be measured easily. That is why we look at games as a medium to evaluate the strategies of decision making. Games allow us not only to reason about one algorithm or one process. Games in a way allow multi agent activity. We had only looked at one algorithm whose aim was to find an optimal path to the goal. Bringing in the idea of games, we could now involve more than one agent and the interaction between agents has mostly been studied by extracting them as games. Here we will look at a group of games which are called board games such as chess, checkers or more commonly played the tic tac toe. Let us now quickly review the characteristics of these board games before we move on to talking about how these games are to be dealt with within AI. Board games are those which you play on a board. We are talking of two person games that is we have exactly two players. These games are zero sum games. Now zero sum games are those where one player gains the other player loses. So it is like A's gain is B's loss if A and B are playing a zero sum game. We are talking of here games which are complete information games. Complete information games are those in which both players have access to all the information. That is they can see the board and thus know the options that the other player has. The other important characteristic of board games that we will deal with is that we are talking of games which are alternate moves. That is the two players that is involved in the game takes turn to make their moves. And finally, we are talking of deterministic games. Deterministic games are those which does not have any element of chance in the moves that one make. So in this portion of our course, we will be looking at how one has a winning strategy for a board game, but then the board games that we will be talking of would be restricted to two person, zero sum, complete information, alternate moves, deterministic games. Now let us take a very simple game 
to illustrate what we mean by these characteristics of a game. This game is called the Grundy's game. Many of you must have played this while you were young. The game involves two players and we have a stack of pennies, a single pile of objects, either a stack of pennies or people will even put seven stones one above the another to make one single pile. The idea of the game is to then divide the stack into two stacks that are unequal. So, you start with stacking seven stones, if it is the opponent's turn, he will then break it up into five and two. So, the first player divides the original stack and then each player alternately does the same to some single stack when it is his turn. The game proceeds until every stack has either just one penny or two because at that point of time you cannot divide the stack into two stacks that are unequal and continuation at that point becomes impossible. The player who first cannot play is the loser in this game. So, let us look at Grandy's game. Here I have seven pennies in one single stack and it is means turn to play. Now, in such game we have a notion of two players, one is called the mean, the other is called the max. We will see why they are called mean and max in a moment, but now let us say the player mean starts to play the Grandi's game with seven pennies in a single stack. Now, a little thought if you give you will realize that 7 can be broken up into 2 unequal stacks in 3 ways. I could have in one stack 6 pennies, in the other stack a single one or I could have 5 and 2 or I could have 4 and 3. This is what has been shown as the next level of the game. So, mean starts playing here and then breaks it into a stack of 6 1, 5 2 and 4 3. It is now Max's turns to play and he can have the following options. Max could break the 6 1 into either a 5 1 stack and the original one stack already there. So, there would be three stacks now 5, 1 and 1 or Max would break it into 4, 2 with the original one remaining there. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that at this point we had 6 in a stack and two possibilities of breaking it up into unequal stacks is 5, 1 and 4, 2. So, these are the possible moves that Max could take if mean had broken it into 6, 1. On the other hand, if mean had actually divided the original stack into 5, 2, I could have the possibility of generating 4, 2, 1 because 5 could be broken up into 4 and 1 and I would carry forward the 2 from here or 5 could be broken up into unequal stacks of 3 and 2. So, I would have 3, 2 and 2. Now, if mean had gone to 4, 3, then the possibilities for max would be 4, 2, 1 because the third could be broken up into 2 and 1 or other possibility could be that the 4 could be broken up into 3, 1. So, I would have 3, 3, 1. Next, it is mean's turn to play and from the given possible alternate positions, mean could explore the next level of the game. That is, 5 could be broken up 
into 4 1 1 unequal stack or 3 2. The 4 2 1 could be broken up into 3 1 leading to 3 2 1 1 and the 3 could be broken up into 2 1 leaving me with 3 2 1 1 stack. The 3 2 2 stack if I start breaking this I will only create equal number. So, all I can do is break up the 3 stack into uneven stack of 2 and 1. Proceeding further Max would then be able to break this node into 3 1. The second one would be possible to be broken up into 2 2 and 1 and the only possibility now left with mean is that he can work on this node. Here it is not possible for mean to break it up into unequal stack because I have 2 2 even if I think of breaking this stack all I will have is 1 1 penny in each stack. So, it will not be a legal move according to the rules of Grandi's game. At this point mean can play and break it up into 2 1 1 1 at which point Max will not have a possibility of moving any further. So, this is the total tree of the possibilities of Grandi's game with 7 pennies in the initial stack. Now, if you look at the winning strategy for Max, what should Max do to ensure that he will win this game? We can note that no matter what win does in this game, that means no matter what mean tries to follow, Max can always win this game. This is precisely because at the first instance here at the top, mean can follow 3 paths which is either to 6 1 or to 5 2 and to 4 3. Once he follows these 3, one of the 3, max can ensure and come to 4 2 1 or 2 3 3 1. Once Max ensures that he has come to either 4 2 1 or 3 3 1, mean is forced to play and divide the stack either this 3 into 2 and 1 or this 4 into the 3 and 1. That is at that stage of the game mean will have to come to this node. Once mean comes to this node, Max ensures that he breaks the 3 stack into 2 1 and at that point mean does not have a legal move and Max can win. So, as we can see no matter what mean does in this game Max can always ensure that he wins this game. Now, let us take a moment and see if this winning strategy for Max has a similarity to the end or graph that we have discussed previously. The end or graph is about having and nodes and or nodes at alternate levels. So, if you look at the winning strategy of Max at one point you would see that there is a similarity in the winning strategy for max and a solution graph for an and or. Because if you look at means next move at any point, then the means next move have successors that are like and nodes. From max perspective, solution must be obtainable from all of these nodes. Whereas, if you look at Max's next move, you will see that Max's next move is something like the OR node because all Max needs 
to win this game is to follow at least one of them. So, this winning strategy of Max is very similar to the Endor graph that we have discussed previously. So, question is can we use the search algorithm for n or graph that is the a o star for searching such game trees. Many simple games actually can be handled by such search techniques that are analogous to those used for finding and or solution graphs. For more complex games such as chess or checkers, the end or search to termination is out of question. It is not possible to generate the whole game tree. Complete game tree for chess has approximately 10 to the power 40 nodes and you can see from the volume that it is not feasible to have the complete tree generated. It would take some 10 to the power 22 centuries to generate the complete checker tree if a successor could be generated every one third of a nanosecond. So, what do we do when we have to search for solutions in such complex games? For complex games, search to termination is impossible. So, our goal in searching such a game might be just to find a good first move rather than the best move possible that would take me to a win. So, we could make the move the best possible right now and with the opponent's reply and then we could search again to find a good first move from this new position. So, extract from the search graph best first move that is what we want to do. This estimation we can make by applying some evaluation function to the leaf nodes of the search graph. In order to do that, let us introduce a couple of concepts before we move on to talk about an algorithm to do whatever we have highlighted about searching complex games. We introduce the concept of a game tree. A game is represented by a game tree. A game tree is actually a layered tree that is at each alternate layers we have the two players playing. So, at this layer Max would be playing, the next layer it is mean playing, thereafter it is Max again. So, a game tree is a layered tree in which at alternate level one or the other player makes the choice and we have what are called the max layer and the mean layer. Now, a game starts at the root here with the max player starting the game and ends somewhere at the leaf nodes. The leaves of a game tree are labeled with outcomes of the game and the game ends there. Let us look at the game tree more closely. So, here is a game tree with the first being the max level, then the mean level, here it is max, then mean, max again, mean and max again. Recall that we are talking of board games which are two players games, so two players are involved and the game is alternate moves that means one player makes a move and then the next player makes a move. So, in this game tree the leaf nodes actually shows the possibility of win, loss or draw for max. So, now you should recall that we are talking of a zero sum game that is a game where one can win then the other must lose or it could be a draw. So, here L refers to the loss for max 
D refers to the draw and W refers to a win for Max. So each of the leaf nodes could be given values, either one of the three, either W, D or L. And they will tell whether following that route, Max wins, loses or there is a draw. Now let us also introduce a very important concept called the minimax value before we proceed further. So the minimax value of a game is the backup value of the root from all the leaves and represent the outcome when both the players play perfectly. That is, let us say we have a game tree and max moves. He will try to choose the best possible value for himself. So max chooses a move that yields the value of 1 if available, else 0 if available and will choose a minus 1 only if all the children are labeled minus 1. Now it is important for us to recall that such zero sum games either we mark the leaves as W for win, D for draw and 1 for loss equivalent to that we can either mark them as 1 for win, 0 for a draw and minus 1 for a loss. Now when Max wants to make a move every time his idea would be to choose 1, to choose the maximum of the next available successes to him. So he would try to get 1 if available, else 0 if available and Max will choose a minus 1 only if all the children are labeled minus 1. So backup rule for mean is exactly the opposite of this and the mean max value of the game is the backup value of the root from all the leaves. So here is example for understanding what the mean max rule does. The mean max rule backs up values from the children of a node. So for a max node, it backs up the maximum values for the children. For a mean node, it backs up the minimum. Like here is the root node and max is playing at the game. Now we have a leaf node mark L and we have another leaf node mark D. There are leaf nodes mark D L N respectively here. Now remember that this label it is mean who is playing at this level it is at this level it is max who is playing the game. So when given the children L and D mean has to back up this value so it will take the minimum of the values and back it up as L. Now this one here is Max's turn and Max wants to maximize the value of the children and therefore it will try to get a backup value of D. So in terms of its equivalent numbers like minus 1 for loss, 0 for a draw, the mean player playing here would back up the minimum value which is minus 1. Given minus 1, minus 1 and 0, the max player would love to back up the maximum value which is 0. So here is a game tree and 
we have marked all the leaf nodes as shown. Now, we would love to back up the values that is identify the best move for each player. Given L and D here, the backup value at this point will be an L. So, the backup value at this point is an L again. The backup value here is an L because this is the means level. Now, at this point, it is Max's play. So, the backup value would be D. Here, the backup value would be W and at this point, the backup value is D again. This point here, it is means choice. So, given a choice between D and W, mean would love to back up D. At this note, it is interesting to note that the only available backup value for mean is W and it is forced to back up to W. It would have loved to back up to L first, then D, but having no other children except W, it has to back up to W. So, it backs up to D and then finally, we have max with W. So, what this game is showing here is that max wins this game because the backup value under the current scenario of leaf nodes is W.